everyone. My name is Priyakshi, and today I'm speaking with Mr. Debasish Mitra, Director of Sales, Service, and Marketing at Altigreen Propulsion Labs. Mr. Mitra, thank you for coming to this chat. Thank you. Thank you, Priyakshi. It's an honor and pleasure to join this chat. Okay, so, sir, can we start with a recent overview of your sales performance, Altigreen Electric Vehicles? What kind of market share do you currently have in the L5 electric cargo vehicles category? Thank you. Yes, uh, we had a humble start in 2021 during our production, though we had been in a research mode for almost eight years from 2013. We had a humble start of around four to five percent in 21. This market share grew up to 11 percent last financial year. In the first few months, we grew up to uh, average of 13 to 14 percent. And only in the month of August, our market share grew up to 18 percent in a single month. So I think we had an incredible journey in terms of growth of market share in this expanding market. Okay, sir. And when you uh, when you say market share, you are only comparing with other electric suppliers or you are talking about the ICE uh, vehicles as well? No, of course not. So uh, I am comparing uh, in terms of L5 category cargo vehicles. So we are, we are in the cargo segment right now. And we are right now talking about electric vehicles in the cargo sector in the L5 category, which is the organized category having FEM subsidy and being governed by the government with a particular torque, power and speed norms. Understood. Okay. So you have been selling the vehicle since 2022, from what I understand. So over this time, what kind of feedback have you received from your customers and how has it influenced your designs? So we have been uh, selling vehicles not from 2022, but from January 2021. So almost a journey of two and a half years. So first year we spent in seeding vehicles. And last year we spent um, uh, elongating our arms in getting into more and more cities. And right now we are in 31 cities. We have our authorized dealerships, but our vehicles are flying in 56 cities. So 31 cities we have authorized dealers, but the vehicles are in 56 cities. These vehicles have been doing phenomenally well. To be honest with you, the first few vehicles which we sold in January 2021, which are running almost for two and a half years now, have already crossed 45,000 kilometer plus and about to touch 50,000 kilometer. This shows the tremendous robustness of the vehicle. There are many vehicles which are running on the roads today, uh, which are doing somewhere between 200 kilometer plus uh, on a single day. That shows that uh, our uh, long-range vehicles Neve with a larger battery pack is actually giving the uh, uh, the consumer the real uh, advantage of the value for the buck. So uh, this makes me feel comfortable that we are being able to give the consumer a long range, long running, and for a commercial vehicle, longer you run, longer you make money. And needless to say, we have been taking constant feedbacks and we have been trying to improve upon uh, smaller issues in terms of headlamps, in terms of driver seat adjustment, in terms of door locks. So it's a Kaizen process. So I cannot say that we are perfect. There are always certain amount of feedback which comes in from the consumer and we try to incorporate them in our vehicles. Right. So Altigreen is a very uh, R&D focused company and you have a lot of proprietary technology, global patents. So we, are li we would like to know what are the main areas of focus for these proprietary technologies that you have? So Altigreen from the day one, uh, since it was founded by uh, Dr. Amitav Sharan, uh, our founder, who himself is a PhD in uh, computer science, uh, and our co-founders who are uh, Dr. John Bangwara and Dr. Lasse Mokongad, who are again doctorates in control engineering and motors, and earlier working for Boeing 747 projects. They are hardcore engineers by heart and by work. So Altigin was never a rich company. It was always an engineering company. So these guys uh, have been working long time to see how do we create something sustainable for the last mile mobility. The Most of the patents uh, which we have got uh, in US or in, uh, in uh, Australia or in Southeast Asia are related to our drive trains. So if you see the major difference between a normal ICE vehicle and an electric vehicle is a drivetrain. What is a drivetrain? Drivetrain is the motor, the motor controller, the battery management system, the battery, the telematics, 
uh, these are all part and parcel of the drive frame. So our our the most important area where Altigrin has a very uh, lucrative advantage over competition, which is because of the patents, is the regeneration of energy. So whenever there is a deceleration of the vehicle, that means uh, the vehicle is running and you want to slow it down. Instead of applying your brake, you decelerate the vehicle. The moment you decelerate the vehicle, the kinetic energy of the wheels are being converted into electrical energy and flows back to the battery and increases the range of the battery. So I repeat, if you are in a normal petrol diesel driven car, you say that I get a good mileage on the highway and a less mileage on the city roads. For an electrical vehicle, it's exactly the opposite. The more times you accelerate and decelerate within the city, you generate more and more energy, which gets stored in the battery and gives the battery further power to run. And that is where the Altigin patents are being famous for. And that's why we get a far more mileage mm -hmm. uh, for per single charge uh, than the competition. So that makes us a very, very different uh, player from the competition, our patents. Okay. And what is the current focus of your R&D efforts? So uh, we have been trying to find out many solutions. Uh, customers have been asking for uh, in the telematics side. They are asking a lot more data. How it can be more data oriented. People are asking uh, uh, how things can be better in terms of increasing the battery life. Uh, people are asking more questions in terms of uh, what sort of innovations can we do uh, specifically to the driver behavior and the driver habits and the driver consumption pattern. So we are trying to see one part is electronic and, and the electrical part. Another is the pure mechanical part from the driver consumption part. What all uh, benefits we can bring to the driver. And because uh, everything we think rotates around the customer and specifically in this case, the driver, because he is the ultimate God who runs the machine the whole day and is a very, very big influencing factor for our decision making. Okay. So uh, in terms of your customer base, what are the primary use cases for the last mile delivery? In what kind of customers are more uh, uh, keen to take up uh, electric electric vehicles and specifically L5 vehicles? So uh, <clears throat> to be honest, one day we sat down together with the sales team to uh, how do we promote our sales and what are the applications where the vehicles goes to and what are the different use cases. And we found that there are 32 different applications where the vehicles are going. Uh, at least one vehicle is seated in every application. But if you told me out of 32, 12 are prioritized where actually the vehicles go. So the largest one, of course, is the e-commerce, which is known by everybody, the uh, Amazons and the Flipkarts and the big baskets of the world. The second part uh, it goes into is FMCG, uh, the Hindustan Lever or the ITCs. The third one, it goes is into medical industry, uh, medicines, uh, because they are very lightweight. Fourth, it gets into uh, uh, your uh, food category, in terms of milk category, uh, in terms of milk vans and others. Then fifth, it goes into uh, water and beverage distribution, like, like Coke, like Pepsi, like all these sort of distribution. Then after that, uh, it goes into something like plywood and uh, small furniture distribution. Uh, so there are like this innumerable number of uh, applications and use cases. The last one may be a very interesting one where I have found that uh, there are drones, uh, drones who buy these vehicles, the drone manufacturers, where they put these drones on these vehicles and goes into the agricultural fields. And from there, they start distributing the uh, the this fertilizers to the different agricultural fields. So I think there are very, very interesting and unique application of these used cases of these particular electric vehicles. And as we go further, it will more increase. Understood. So uh, you also have uh, this variant that supports 15 minutes rapid charging in your association with Exponent. So we're curious to know, uh, because that will also require a specific uh, charging equipment, their e-pump. So what kind of customers are they who are opting for this variant that supports 15 minute charging? Yeah, so we actually have three variants, not one or not two. 
So the normal one is the one which we know right now is on the table, which is called NEV, N -E -V, New Energy Efficient Vehicle or NEV. This has a fixed battery of 11 kilowatt hour, and that, which is a long range product and that is doing extremely well, which we are right now seeing in the figures which appears in Vahan. The second product which will be seen from next month is a product called NEV Bhai, which will be a slightly smaller range, maybe 100 kilometer on a single charge, a slightly smaller battery. That will be a very interesting product to see. And the third product is a NEV Tej, T-E-Z, the one which you are speaking about, which is a fast charging in 15 minutes. Now, very interesting. The question is this, does it mean that 15 minute vehicle product can only be charged in 15 minutes and do you only require an EPUM to do it? The answer is no. So in this stage vehicle, there are three options. Option one, option two, option three. Option one is you can, if you go to an e-pump, you can charge in 14 minutes, 26 seconds, not even 15 minutes from zero to 100%. So this is really super fast charging. So if you have an e-pump, go there, charge it, super fast charge. Then in case you do not have an e-pump, then the second, second option is, uh, there's another second port which you can charge in a normal public charging infrastructure like DC001, which you have in Delhi. So you can go to any of the DC001 charging points and you can charge the product in around 45 minutes to one hour. Third, you don't have an e-pump, you don't have a DC001 and still you need charging, you don't need anything, you simply go to your home and I need a 16 volt normal supply in a three phase, what everybody has in home and you can charge in four hours. So a driver or, a, or an operator has option to charge at home or at a, or at a public infrastructure or if you have e-pump. Coming to the question that why do you require this 15 minute charging? Why and what application? So see, there are a lot of applications where you need very quick round deliveries. Give me an example. Say today morning, you don't feel like going to the market. You are, you are a little feverish. You don't want to go to office. You want to order your vegetables today to home. You don't want to go to the market. So you went, go to uh, Amazon and you press the Amazon farm fresh and you order some vegetables, eggs, whatever. So now you can't wait till next day for the delivery to come like a Flipkart or Amazon normal order. You want it in the next two hours to come to your home, right? So this last moment, the three wheelers, what they do from the Amazon hub, every two hours, whatever orders are getting collected, let's say five or six or seven, they make the small packets and goes and delivers to the customer. Again, after six deliveries, they come back to the hub. Again, they take another six orders for the next two hours, they again go out and come back. So there is constant going out, coming back, going out, coming back. Like this, it starts five o'clock in the morning and goes up up to 11 o'clock in the night. So roughly around 18 hours of duty cycle for these vehicles. So the distance may be small. Maybe from Amazon Hub to your home is only 15 kilometer or 10 kilometer. But 10, 10, 20 into 10 times a day, it requires 200 kilometers of running. So where do you have the time for charging it? Three hours charging, do you have a time? You don't have. One hour, do you have time? You don't have. So this 15 minute charging, you can just quick, quickly have a charge after four shifts and get it charged for the next one hour. So very fast charging, quick rounds of cycles of delivery and you can utilize the vehicle 200, 250 and 250 kilometers per day. And that makes it a very, very unique proposition because more you run the asset, that means as a owner of the vehicle, if you can run the vehicle so many kilometers and deliver so many packets, you can earn far, far more. So the 15 minutes charging application is fast delivery by rotation. Advantage for customer is much, much higher earning potential because you are able to deliver more and more throughout the day without wasting any time on charging. And third, of, of course, uh, very interesting is that very unique for Altigreen, you can charge it either at home overnight or at the public infrastructure or in the 15 minute charge. Okay, understood. Uh, so if we uh, talk about your overall dealership strategy, uh, so what, how many dealerships do you currently have and uh, what are your current targets? You're targeting metros more. Are you focusing on the tier one, tier two cities? Where do you see the high demand for the vehicles? So, actually, uh, we are right now having 
authorized dealerships in 31 cities and authorized service centers in around 100 locations across the country. Even as you sit in Chandigarh, we have our dealership in Mohali. Right now, the demand of the cargo vehicles are mostly seen in the main cities and in the tire ones. The tire to demand is yet to come up and structure a little bit more. It will come up. But what happens is whenever there is an innovation or there is a technology change, that means from ICE, that means diesel CNG, you are moving to electric. The It's a change, not technology change, new technology, new acceptance, new adoption. So any adoption and new technology is always driven by the main cities. So the vehicles are now coming down to Agra, Varanasi, Gaya. I am seeing they are now flowing into the tire to cities slowly, slowly, and the adoption is increasing. What L5 category is supposed to do is to replace the current diesel and CNG three-wheelers. The current diesel and CNG three-wheelers, that is the normal industry. The L5 electric category is supposed to replace them. How much it has replaced till now? So when government introduced the L5 category, the L5, it was only 1% of the total three-wheeler market, cargo market. That means if 100 total cargo vehicles are sold in India, diesel, electric, CNG, only one of them was electric in 2021. In the next year, 21-22, this figure went up to 6%. That means out of 100, six vehicles were electric. Then last year, it penetration went up to 18%. This year, quarter one, the penetration went up to 24%. And as on last two months, July and August, the penetration has gone up to 26%. That means today, if 100 cargo three-wheelers are sold in India, 26 of them are electric L5 cargo three-wheeler. So this is the rapid electrification which is happening. Some states it is happening very, very fast like Delhi, uh, uh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra. Some states it is taking a little bit more time. But overall, we hope that by 25, at least 60-70% of the market should be electrified as per cargo category. The similar speed we are seeing in the passenger side also. The percentage is slightly slower, but the volumes are high. Right. Okay. So uh, speaking of passenger side, uh, if you can let us in on your plans on launching a passenger vehicle as well. So immediately on the cards, I think uh, by uh, before the festive season itself kicks off, we should be launching a, a passenger vehicle, but not the regular one which you see on the city roads. It will be for the semi-rural and the rural segment. Okay. It will be named as Neve Rahi. Neve, same Neve, N W E V Rahi, R A H I. So th that uh, we are expecting by around 15. Before the, before the Navratra starts, we should be able to send vehicles. And in case we actually, you are there in Chandigarh, one of the vehicles will go to Chandigarh, and I'll be happy if you are the person who sees the vehicle and covers the story on Neve Rahi. Okay. Understood. But when you say it is not uh, like your regular vehicle, it's for uh, the more for the rural areas. What what differences are we talking about? Okay. So in the three-wheeler passenger category, forget electric. Uh, let's come to normal, normal, non non-electric category. There are two types of three-wheeler passenger. One is called D plus three. D is driver plus three. That is what you see, let's say, in the Chandigarh roads, where the driver is driving and three people can sit in the back. Most of the cities, uh, you can see them in Bangalore, in Bombay, in Delhi, everywhere you can see them. And they mostly run on uh, meter. That means you say, auto, airport, leke chalo, jitna meter hoga, 100 rupees for 200 rupees, we'll pay him. And they are driven by permits. The government used to give permits to them. Then there is a second category, which, which are the ones called D plus 5. D plus 5 means driver plus 5 persons. These are seen in the outskirts of the cities. They are not seen in the main city. They are a little bigger. They actually carry 
six, seven, eight people also, some overloading happens. They are not seen in the main roads. They are slow and they don't go by meter. They go like a, a shared passenger auto. Uh, you you get into the auto, you travel for three stops, you pay five rupees, you get down. It is not like your personal auto. Say people go on coming down, go on coming down. So this particular category is called the D plus five category where we are entering right now. D plus three also we have aspirations to enter, but that might take some time. Maybe next financial year. Okay, very interesting. Very interesting. I don't think we have any uh, other electric um, options in the D5 category. No, right? there is nobody. There is nobody. Correct. Okay. That's very interesting. And uh, yes, I've seen a lot of these. I used to uh, stay in Faridabad for some time. So over yes. there, these uh, vehicles were, this This was uh, the normal way to travel. You have three stops, five stops. You yes. pay five yes. rupees per stop, how much you go Correct. and get. Correct, correct. They, but they will not enter the municipality area. They will be outside the municipality area. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. Um, and uh, any uh, plans for uh, working on a four-wheeler as well for the cargo applications? Yes. There is uh, uh, absolute aspiration on the four-wheeler cargo. And uh, uh, we would like to discuss that. But the launch of that will be definitely uh, at least 12 to 16 months away from now onward. But we are working on something uh, internally as a code project, but uh, not as an immediate future. Understood. Understood. Uh, I think that's uh, uh, that's all from my side. Uh, Mr. Mitra, thank you so much for taking the time and for answering all, all my questions. Yeah, it was a real pleasure. And I hope that whenever uh, we are in, I'm in Chandigarh, uh, we meet. Uh, sure. Very happy to converse with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.